So this morning we're doing a little break from our study in First Corinthians. We're doing a little bit something different. We're looking at life's winter season. Winter within our own lives. We were at, through it in other church just and that was a theme that they were focusing on. So I thought we'll just bring this message to you guys here today as well. So we've not got a main passage of scripture that we're focusing on today. We'll bounce about a little bit. But just to open this up, it's going to be Ecclesiastes chapter 3. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and verse 1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for everything and every purpose under the earth. So as we look across nature, we see there's natural cycles across our winter and across nature. We've got spring, summer, autumn and winter. They come and go every year without pass, without fail. They happen. It's ordained. God has put that in place. And it's very important for how things work, for farming, for fruit production, for all these types of things. There's a raining season, a growing season, a harvest season and a kind of fallow season as well. And obviously, what season do we like the most, or most of us like the most? We want the summer. We want the sunshine. We want the, the happiness, the brightness that lifts our spirit, that lifts our mood. But, unfortunately, it can't always be summer. And it's good that it's not always summer as well, because every season has its own purpose. And just as God has created seasons for the earth, spiritually speaking as well, we can go through these natural seasons in our own spiritual lives as well. And just like in the natural, spiritually, there's a purpose for each and every season for us. So if we think about springtime in a kind of spiritual sense, we might, in our spiritual walk, if we get a springtime, feel like a newness, a freshness in the spirit. New life excitement, like the revival kind of buzz going about. Something's about to go boom. Summer, we think of abundance. We think of maturity, fruit growing, being able to get the harvest. Freedom in our lives. Autumn, we start seeing things going down. Starts going to be a bit brown. The leaves start to fall off. Things start to kind of die in some shape or form. We might feel loss, fatigue. Worry for the future, things pulling back, a wee bit of decay going on in some shape or form. But again, there's reasons and there's purposes for all of these things. So we're going to jump to another verse in 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4 from the start of that chapter. And it's Paul speaking to his protege Timothy about ministry, but we'll take another wee aspect from it. He says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. So no matter what season we're in, we need to be ready. Whether the season's coming in, it's starting. Whether the season's coming out, it's coming to an end and something else is in our future. At every point, we need to be ready. So winter, winter, if you think about the winter season, it's a time for Think about our garden. Your big garden shears and you're chopping, lopping big bits off, big boughs off and branches off your trees and your bushes. You're pruning the things that are looking as if they're dying off. Spiritually, we might feel that discouragement in our lives, restriction, coldness, a bit of unhappiness, a bit of difficulty as this cold season appears in our life. And that's sometimes reflected in our walk with God as well. This kind of restriction, difficulty, a bit of coldness, a bit of discouragement. But as Paul tells Timothy, you need to be ready in that season just as much as you're ready in any other season. Because there's a point for it. When things are not visually going well and things are not blooming, things are not oh so wonderful... Things can't be wonderful all the time. Something has to take place in advance of that point to prepare the way for the harvest that's in front of us. So during winter, we need to be ready and we need to be prepared and just to be aware of the season that we're in. And the truth is, during every season, spring, summer, autumn and winter, we as believers need to grow during that season. That is still a purpose for us. As Paul told Timothy, you need to be ready, which means to be sharp, to be present, to be aware, to be active as well. 
During winter, when it's dark and it's cold, you just want to sit in your backside, be a cup of tea or a cup of hot chocolate and do nothing, and watch the telly, forget everything else that's going on. You can only do that for so long before everything else starts to fall apart. During our spiritual season of winter, we still need to be active with things, to have a focus in the right areas, and not to be despondent with our spiritual life. So we're going to look at spiritual winter with a slightly different lens to see maybe some of the positives of the winter season and the purposes of the winter season in our life as well. And what we need to see is there is a purpose behind every season. We need to have a correct attitude to the season, through the season, and when we come out of that season as well. Our attitude through it all and our actions are very important. And in each and every season, God has a purpose to do something in our lives, with our lives, and then through our lives as well. It's a process the same way as the cycle of autumn, winter, spring, summer. There's a cycle in our spiritual life as well. So I don't know what spiritual season you're in personally. You might feel like it's winter. You might be in a summer period. I don't know. But for each and every period, there is a purpose. And if you're not in winter just now, the reality is winter will come at some point. And it's not a punishment in your life, it's just a preparation point for something in the future. And we need to look at it that way. So we're going to look at three purposes for our winter season, for this spiritual winter season that we might come across or will come across at some point. And the first purpose is that winter kills the things that would hinder us or hold us back. Winter, if you think of the kind of farming analogy, winter, when it falls, the coldness, the ground freezes, anything that's living in that ground, the larvae, the bugs and all the microorganisms, many of them die with extreme coldness that's present at that time. The cold kills off the bugs and the insects and all these things that could spoil and affect the future harvest that's before the farmer within their fields. So farming communities, they want a good cold winter because it does them good for their future. The freeze kills all the pests that will be a pest in their future from their farming life, whether it's fruit or whether it's crops. So really what the farmer doesn't want to do is start a new growing season without dealing with all the pests that were present at that time. He wants to prepare and get rid of all of the grubs and all of the things that would be negative in that growing season before it actually comes to fruition. So he wants to kill off the things that shouldn't be there or the things that will cause harm in the future. So if you think about it, the cold descends, it gets to the ground, it kills even the things that are beneath the surface. And sometimes that's in our spiritual winter what God wants to do for us. We're smiley happy people. When people ask us when we come to church, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. And we're not fine at all. There's many things going on in our life that pull us down and drag us down that are fiery darts in our lives at that time. But we're hiding them beneath the surface. And sometimes we're even hiding them from God. We're not even kind of releasing them to the Lord to deal with. So these things are wiggling and growing beneath the surface. And for our future walk with God and our future harvest, if these things aren't dealt with, the fruit that God would ordain for us and want for us can become spoiled. We might never get to that point. So the harsh winter season has its purpose. God wants to get below our surface to our heart and see what bugs we've got going on in our lives. There might be self-inflicted bugs, or there might be other bugs that are in our circumstances. He wants us to hand them over to him so that they can be dealt with and then we can go forward without having these hindrances in our lives. So winter, although it might look bleak and fruitless, it's a season of preparation for the growth that's going to come in the next season. But God has to do that work in the in-between time. And if we allow him to do it, it will be effective and it will prepare us for this next season that's going to come. So we can do a wee self-assessment check on ourselves. Do we have bugs? And where are our bugs? What's in your life that hinders you? What's in your life that's not right with God that you would have to hand over to him to deal with? We've got the scripture in John 15. 
John 15, verse 1 to 4. And Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that he bear, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So if you've got a garden, you'll be aware of gardens don't just look after themselves. They require maintenance. Your winter period is that period of maintenance where there's maybe branches growing that need lopped off so as that they will grow in abundance in the future. They'll be pruned back so as their harvest in the future is improved. And the winter season of our soul is the same. Sometimes it's a season where we need to assess our lives and think, okay, that needs chopped off just now. That needs dealt with. That needs tied up, pulled up out of the way because it's getting trampled on and it's important. There are certain focuses in our life that we need to look at and see what we're doing with them. Are we giving them the correct focus or a lack of focus? Are we focusing on the wrong things instead of focusing on the correct things? Winter, you spend more time indoors, don't you? Sometimes more time yourself. Your mind starts going. And what we need to do is have the mind of Christ to look at our own lives through that spiritual lens to see, okay, what in my life do I need to hand over to God? What does I need to deal with in my life? Because what God desires from us is that we bear much fruit for his sake, not for ours. John 15, 8 says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so that you will be my disciples. If you're a Christian, you're a disciple, and the Lord has ordained you to bear fruit in your life, simply just to walk that walk within that narrow path, to live a life pleasing to him, that is bearing fruit for him in the simplest sense. So the winter season is a season that causes us to search our lives and to ask the Lord to search our lives as well. We examine our life, assess where we've been, who we are just now, and where we're going if we're keeping that tra trajectory. And we ask the Lord to change our path if it's not pointed in the correct way. So it's a season where God might prune our life. And if you get your life cut back a little bit, it's not going to be pleasant. You might feel like they sting a little bit in some circumstances. It might be uncomfortable. But it is for your future glory and for the Lord's sake as well that you bear much fruit in your next season. And although winter's not easy, it's not a punishment from God. It's for your good and for the kingdom's good as well. And in his love and care and work, that's him preparing you for that abundance that's going to come in the next stages of your life as you walk with God, focus on him and look to raise his name high. So it's a season where we're set up for the things to come. Winter comes before growth before newness, before the blooming, before the harvest period, before the breakthroughs in our lives, winter needs to come. So we need to have the correct attitude towards our winter. So what do we do? John 15 verse 4, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. We get our focus correct. We look to the Lord. We stick close to him in prayer, in the word, in fellowship with each other. We have our focus correct to focus on what's going to improve, bolster us in our walk with the Lord. Abide in him. Come to him in a closeness in your relationship. Because that is what's going to make the difference. As we opened up the scripture, one of the ones, Second Timothy 4.2, be ready in season and out of season. To be ready means to abide with Jesus, to stick close to him. Instead of, oh, winter's crap, it's dark, it's cold, I'm feeling depressed. We go down a kind of self-pity, wallowing situation. We go, Lord, why are you doing this? And we push him to the side. In your winter, you don't push him away. You need to pull him close to get the warmth of the Holy Spirit in your life, to abide in him and him in you. But we need to be prepared for that time. The second purpose is that winter reveals what will last in our lives and what won't last. What's got purpose eternally in our walk with the Lord. And if we go to the garden analogy again, we think, okay, it's nice in the garden. 
think of a nice summer garden that's full of nice bright flowers and it's looking lovely and bright and you know it puts a wee smile on your face. Then fast forward a few months to winter and look at the same garden. It looks very, very different. And that's because you get two different types of plants in your garden. You've got those that last all year round. Your perennial plants, even during winter, they might look as if they're a bit dead, but come spring, summer, they bloom back again. They're always there. You've got your trees and your shrubs that are there, a constant present within your garden. Then you've got your annual plants, your bedding plants that only last for a little season. Take your bedding plant, expose it to a bit of frost, and what happens? It folds, it dies, the frost kills it. It cannot withstand the winter, it's not got the strength, it's not got the security, it's not got the fortitude to deal with that season. And we can think, okay, that's plant life, but what about us? Well, we can think about ourselves, I suppose, first of all. Do we act like a perennial plant, or do we act like a bedding plant? When hard times come upon us, have we got strength and fortitude in the Lord? Because we're abiding in him, gaining our strength from the, the branch, or the trunk and we are the branch, are we gaining the strength from him? We can withstand the coldness. Or when hard times come against us, we fall down and think, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I've got no strength, and just wallow in that situation. We need to be the strong ones. Abide in the Lord, the strength of his Holy Spirit within us, and we can withstand the winter and get through to the next season. But during summer, when you look at the plants, unless you're a kind of garden type person, unless you're in the know, you can maybe look at plants and think, I don't know if that's going to die over winter, or if that's going to survive. We caught it a few times, not that I do gardening much now, but fuchsia plants, we quite like fuchsia plants. We get fuchsia plants that are hardy, perennials, that will last, come back every year, and you get ones that die off during winter. Looking at it, you don't know if you've lost the label, tough tattoo, you just need to wait and see. But winter comes, and it becomes clear. Spring comes and it becomes clear. Summer comes, you're still waiting for that plant to do something, but it's as dead as a doorknob. Who are we? Who do we want to be? And look round about the room to the people round about you as well. Be the friends to the people round about you that you want to be as well. You can be an annual friend. You're there during all the good times to support somebody and celebrate with them when life's going good. But when your life goes down this morning, you're struggling, you're not sure what's going on, you're maybe going through a spiritual winter and you're struggling, have you got that perennial friend that's always going to be there for you? By your side to encourage you. They don't leave, they don't fail, fall down. They're there solid by your side. To encourage you, to edify you, to build you up. That's what we need round about us. And that's who we should be to those in our sphere of influence as well. We need our perennial friends, not to be annuals in other people's life. And if you've got those types of people, we need to hold those friendships dear and thank God for them and develop them. And as I was thinking of that, I thought the term, you know, the armour bearers within the Bible. They would carry the, the king or the kind of special person's chain mail and their, their sword and their what's that, shield and all these types of things. But they didn't just carry this stuff that they would actually die before the person they were carrying the armour for. They would give their lives up for that person. I'm carrying all your chainmail and all your stuff, but you know, I'm protecting you. I've got your back no matter what. And in 1 Samuel 14, verse 7, it speaks of Jonathan. And it's his armoured bearer says to Jonathan in verse 7 of 1 Samuel 14, to all that is in your heart, go then, here am I with you according to your heart. Go and do all that's in your heart. I'm with you, I understand what your purposes are, what you're trying to do. Go, go, go with it, whatever you feel the Lord doing, go, I've got you. Here am I with you. I'll be with you, I won't leave you, I've got your back, I'll protect you. I'm there right with you, according to your heart. You know, it's that heart connection. Jonathan is encouraged and supported by his armour bearer, protected by his armour bearer as well. Again, 
looking to that friendship analogy, that's what we should hopefully try and build round about us as well. And can we be that person to somebody else when their winter season hits? Can we have their back? At the end of the day, when winter hits, what it does, it reveals who we are. It reveals our heart towards God, and it reveals our heart towards those round about us as well. It's okay, you know, saying to God, you know, praising God when everything's going good in your life, but when something goes bad, do you still do it? It's okay being nice and cheery and encouraging to your friends round about you, but when you're going through a hard time, can you still do that to them, encourage them when you're going through a difficulty? In your winter season, your faith is revealed. Does your faith rise to the challenge of a hard frost in your life where difficulty comes in? Or is it so underdeveloped, does your faith fail you? And I suppose that's all coming down to your spiritual maturity. We need strength and maturity and longevity, just like those plants in our garden are the structure of our garden. You don't plan your garden round about your plants that are just there for summer. You plan your garden round about your shrubs and your trees and then these other wee bits of colour just added in. But your structure and your stability is in your perennials and your trees and your shrubs, they're always there. Is our spiritual maturity there? Is it a strength? Is it a constant? Is it there all the time, no matter what season that we're in? Whether we're in leaf or whether we're looking a bit bedraggled, you know, can we cope with that? Is our faith and our trust in the Lord? A third purpose, winter makes you think about preparation and what you're wearing during that season. In winter, you don't wear your summer clothes, do you? You wear your winter clothes. In winter, if you went out in your shorts and t-shirt, then spent quite a long, long time outside, you'd feel, feel the benefit of it and not do it for a long period of time, you'd end up with hypothermia. You'd have harm to your body. And spiritually, in winter, we need to clothe ourselves in the correct way as well. Isaiah 61 verse 3 talks of exchanging our garments. We take off the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise. During our winter season, what we need to do is to praise God. Heaviness comes upon us. We need to look to God with the right attitude. Willingly take that garment off and to praise God in our circumstances. Praise God for those roundabouts, what God's done in our life and done in the past, what he's got to do in the now and what our future holds as well. We choose, we choose what we wear. You can choose wallowing, difficulty, complaining, or you can choose to look to God and to lift it to him and to praise him no matter what. But we've got to focus on the correct things. What other things do we wear in winter? Well, at all times, the believer needs to wear their spiritual armour. But winter is a season we definitely, definitely need it. Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In the winter, when it's dark, you're maybe a wee bit more alone, where your mind goes 20 to the dozen, if you're feeling a bit depressed and discouraged because things aren't blooming, you've not got the excitement, you're in this fallow preparation time. Branches have been cut off, you're thinking, why is this going on? It's been a wee bit, oh, we're not sure what's, what's the matter during this season. That's when the enemy wants to get into you. The fiery darts get shot. And if we're not careful, if we've not got the correct attitude of praise, looking to God, abiding in the Lord, and if we don't have our spiritual armour on, that's when those darts can penetrate and do us harm. So as the rest of the chapter goes, all those items of spiritual armour we need to wear at all times and especially through our winter season. The enemy of our soul seeks to steal, kill and destroy. He doesn't stop. He's always at it. We shouldn't stop either. As we said, it's that you continue on you don't be despondent during your winter season. You're active to put on your garment of praise, your spiritual armour, to abide in the Lord, to be the perennial friend to those round about, and they should be the same to us as well. We need to be on guard 
and also on the defence at that time. When coldness hits, you won't get automatically, you know, I'm all cosy and warm straight away. It takes a bit of a process. It doesn't change overnight, but as you lay hold of God's truth and the word of God, as you seek the Holy Spirit's anointing within your life and work, as you put on praise, as you put on prayer, put on your spiritual armour, your temperature will rise and rise and rise, and you'll be seen through to the end of that season into the next one. Correct attitude and the correct actions and the bugs that are in your life that will affect your future will be eradicated and removed out of the way. So in conclusion, think of the analogy of a tree. A big tree in the middle of a field, in the middle of winter. It's brown, it's gnarly, doesn't look very good. But we know, come spring, come summer, it's going to look completely different. We think in winter it's doing absolutely nothing. It's just standing there until the better weather comes. But even during winter, that tree is very active. It's a time for roots to go down. The roots go down, seeking the water. Because during winter, as the ground freezes, the water goes lower. And the roots need to go lower to seek more water to seek it out. The roots go down and they go out and they expand round about. Winter time is for us to not just think about the surface, but to go deeper with God. To put down our roots and to sink them deeper and deeper and deeper and to expand our reach with the Lord as well and with each other to support and encourage one another. It's a time for roots to be established, a focus on our roots, so that when the other seasons come, we're rooted and we're grounded and we're prepared to the harvest of fruit, to be able to withstand the heaviness of the fruit of the harvest that could be coming in the future. So it's a time for strength and stability to be established. So the choices we make now will determine our future seasons. The end goal of the winter is not to harm us, but to prepare us for the season that's got to come. Preparation, that is the key word for winter. Stretch out in the correct areas, refocus, think upon the things that we've spoken about here today. We're told in Daniel 2, verse 21, he changes the times and the seasons, he removes kings and raises up kings, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. So God changes the seasons and the times. God knows what he's doing. Whatever season, whatever time you're in just now, he knows your season and there's a purpose. We just need to look to God for that purpose. So as we're contemplating that, I'm going to ask um, a couple of people, Gordon, would you mind coming up and passing out the elements of communion for me? Thank you very much. And just as the elements of communion are passed around, we can contemplate in where we are in our season personally at this moment in time. Are we in a season where we're maybe feeling a bit despondent, a bit down, a bit wintry? God would have to say to you that it will not last. There's another season that's got to come, but during this season that you're in, it's a preparing work. See what God's speaking to you at this moment in time. Are there things beneath the surface in your life that God wants to lay a hold of? Identify, deal with, get out of the way. So as you're walking, the future is going to be a closer walk with him. Maybe you're in a summer period where things are going quite well. You're quite happy. You get a wee spring in your step. Praise God for that. Give him thanks. Keep that garment of praise on. Lift it all to him and give him the glory. But we know that these seasons don't always last. Our spiritual life's not always praising the Lord and happy clapping. Everything's going wonderful. What we need to do in all seasons is just to give everything to God. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. In the words of another old hymn, take my life and let it be, consecrated Lord to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. 
So as we have the communion elements, we just need to do that examination of our own lives. You know, we're told to think about these things, to examine our own lives, where we are ourselves at this moment in time. Jesus gave all for us. And in response, he desires that we give ourselves back to him. But sometimes we hold a little bit of ourselves back. We don't want to give everything to him. This is where the Lord was saying, we want to do the deep work in you. To see those areas that you're hiding, those areas underneath. And the things that might hinder us in the future. So we'll just read out of 1 Corinthians 12 and then we'll have a little moment of reflection as we ask the Lord to examine us, to see if there's any ways within us that he wants to identify for us to deal with and then we'll celebrate by taking the elements together. So 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse, <clears throat> verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood and the body of our Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For who who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So I'm just going to pray, and we'll just have a wee moment of reflection, and then we'll take the elements together. So Lord, we give you thanks for your work in our lives, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus, you gave up your body on that cross of Calvary for salvation. As we confess our sins to you, Lord, and confess you as our Lord and Saviour, you have indeed given us your righteousness. You've forgiven us of our sins and the penalty of our sins. For all that we'd name you as Lord and Saviour, as we come to this these elements here, your body and your blood, the bread and the wine, we give you thanks, Lord God, for what you've accomplished, for that great gift of salvation in our lives. So now, Lord, we're just going to take a moment of silence just to reflect on who you are and to ask you, Lord, just to, to speak to us and to examine us, Lord, and for us to examine our own lives and to see, Father God, if we truly are abiding in you or not. So Lord, we just ask your Holy Spirit to be with us as we have this moment of silence before your throne, before your presence. So as the Lord said, let us all now take and eat the bread, the body of our Lord, and remember what he has accomplished on our behalf. And let us drink the cup. Symbolic of that blood that covers us from all our unrighteousness. And we'll just pray before handing over to the worship band, tenders and song. So Lord God, we give you thanks. May we have been indeed been able to take this communion, Lord, these elements to remember who you are and what you've accomplished, Lord. And we do take it, Lord, and we proclaim your death until you come again. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus, you don't leave us without hope. Your word tells us you will come back for those that are redeemed, for those that have received salvation, full and free. For those that are indwelt by your Holy Spirit, that redemption of our promise ahead, you're going to come back and receive us to yourself. So as we contemplate, Lord, in which season we're in our spiritual lives just now, Father, we you just pray that you would kill the things in our lives that are a hindrance to your work in and through us. We surrender to you, Lord, and continue to ask you to show us that those areas of our lives that need 
need to be dealt with, Father. The hidden areas beneath the surface, Lord, that we keep hidden and out of you. Help us, Lord, to have the attitude of heart that is correct, that will help us no matter the season we're in. Help us to be prepared, prepared in our winter, prepared in the spring, prepared in the summer, prepared in the autumn time, Lord. Whatever we're feeling, Lord, just help us to be ready for it. Abiding in you, Lord, with our Holy Spirit enabling us, helping us to bear fruit for your glory and to experience that growth and newness and moving of your spirit, Lord, when you are doing it. Help us to be sustained and encouraged, even just now, even today, Father. For those that may be feeling a bit down, Lord, we pray you would lift the heads. You would lift the heads and you would strengthen the, the feeble knees, Lord, and lift up the, the dangling arms, Father. And we give you thanks for each other, for our fellow brothers and sisters to come to our aid, Lord, when we're feeling down, to build us up and to hold us up, some to either side, Father. So as we now go on to end in a couple of songs, Lord, we give you thanks that we can just praise and worship you and just help us, Lord, to surrender all to you as we sing now and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.